Why? Why me? Why this? That's my biggest question, is why? Mark was our firstborn. He was a happy, full of wonder little boy. There was a lot of delight in Mark. He loved the world. He fell in love with Tolkien and the Lord of the Rings story. He had a real active, imaginative mind. It just, it changed him. Wonder and imagination just vanished, it seemed like. It just shut him down and shut all the light out of his eyes in a lot of ways. And everything became about that obsession. We take away anything we found that were his sources and we locked the computers the best we could and we made rules, we made ground rules. And they were broken and over and over and over again. He took on a very, very combative nature, and it was him against the world and him against us. And every step of the way where I had to take a hard stand, I had to close off a portion of my heart. Help me to love him was my biggest prayer. God, I'm having a hard time loving this boy, my own son, I'm having a hard time loving him. God was faithful to remind me he is in my son's life and he loves him more than I ever could imagine. It was hard because over time it felt like we were losing him. We had tried everything and in every case I thought I had hope. So at every step, I thought, well, he surely won't push it to the point where he has to leave the home. But he did. He flunked out of school. He was even stealing from us at some point to get money to buy drugs. I had no question about what I had to do. There was nothing repentant about him. By the time he turned 18, I said, you're going to have to leave. Never ceases to be your son. And that's the hardest part. That's what makes it so hard. It was hurting me but I had to let him live with the consequences of what he chose to do. He was like a zombie, and wandering the streets at night and, and stepping out in traffic. And he disappeared. I remember having to go down and look for him and, and not finding him. And how do you, how do you deal with that? That's where I felt the lowest. I have no plan. We didn't think he was going to stay or make it, but he did. By God's grace, he stayed. And after a few months, he actually made a strong commitment to the Lord and was baptized. We saw light in his eyes. We had not seen in a long, long time. We are so encouraged. He called us a few times, sometimes up. I can do this. Sometimes cry and I'm a loser. I should have never left. But I told him, I said, honey, God is the God of second chances and you can do this. I love you. We love you. Jesus is with you. Just don't forget that. And he said, I love you, Mom, and he hung up.
there's always the question of why didn't you stop him? You know, you could, I know you could. You're the God of our hearts, right? You can call us out of darkness. Why not? I remember our pastor at Mark's memorial service said, you may ask the question, where was Jesus? When Mark took his life, when he took those pills, he said, I would suggest to you that he was there. And he caught him when he fell. It took him home to be with him. We were all together as a family to receive that call. And it allowed us to grieve together as a family. The kids, they could see us grieve together about it and grieve in faith and grieve in trusting God. Each in their own way came to faith and that they'll see him again, they'll see Mark again. I know that God loved him all the way up to the end. I know that I can trust him with my children. And I know that what he does is right and good. What went through my mind was, Really, God? I don't understand why. What he's shown me is that when he takes away, he gives something better in return. Because he's given me himself in the, all the losses that I've gone through, I have sought him and I found him. As I learned to thank God every day for the little things and for the things that I had left, it gave me joy. I began to understand what James meant when he said, count it all joy, brothers, when you go through trials of many kinds. How can you otherwise recognize God's goodness in every part of your life? I thank God that even though I've lost part of my hearing, I can still hear birdsong. And I thank God that I can still look through my camera and see his beauty. I have a husband who loves me and cares for me. I have three beautiful children and now two grandsons and another on the way. I have a church body that came around us during the time of Mark's death that just blew us away with their love. How can I not be grateful? I find that I fall in love with the pottery when I make it. I can put my thumb in it and it shows. I can put a stamp in it, it shows that pattern. And then I cut it off the wheel and I set it aside and it dries. And it's not soft and pliable anymore. And it's hard and it's kind of lifeless. And then when it comes through the final firing, it's just like, wow, it takes on a whole new life. There's almost a pathway of death and rebirth in that whole process that I think is reflected in what we've come through in a lot of ways. What each one of us goes through as God brings us through death really into new life in, in Him, and it's His work, and He brings you forth into something that really, really glorifies Him. I love capturing light. I love the way God has created light and the way it filters through things, the way it changes colors, and the way the landscape changes. I get up 
in the mornings and I look out and the first thing I see is a sunrise. It's just a constant reminder of his faithfulness. Every day the sun rises, he's there. Every day he's with me. He never fails, never, ever fails. Yeah, I hear that truth today. God will never fail and he's never failed you yet. Even if you've gone through the darkest of times, maybe you're walking through the dark night of the soul right now. You're in a dark tunnel and you don't really see light in that tunnel and you don't really know which direction to go and you're confused and you're, you're lost. But I'm here to tell you and I pray and I hope that that story, that family's story speaks to your heart today that God is with you. He is with you when things are great, when things are seemingly going perfect and there's nothing wrong. He's the God of the good days, but even more so, He is the God of the bad days. He is the God who is with you in the valley of the shadow of death. And that story is such a beautiful picture of what the gospel is what the gospel does. It is the gospel. It is the good news of Jesus Christ. That's literally what the gospel means. It's good news. What is the good news you might be asking? Cause I haven't heard any good news. You might be saying that, thinking that. The good news is that Jesus is our savior. Jesus is our friend. Jesus is the light in the tunnel. He's there with you in the tunnel. He's not going to forsake you. Even if you feel like he has, he will never forsake you. That is a promise that you can cling to friend. Even when you don't feel it, he's still working. He's still with you. He still loves you. And as I was watching that story, I was reminded of, of Job, the story of Job. He loses everything. He loses his family, his daughters, his sons, everything, his whole life, his well being. And this is what he says Though he slay me, referring to God, yet I will trust in him. I believe that we go through things, things that'll teach us a lesson, things that will help us, things that will heal us. And it's not always going to be pretty. Jesus never promised that our life would be easy. He actually said that in this life, you will have trouble. But here's what he said right after that. But take heart, take heart for I have overcome the world. So what he's, that's an invitation. That's what he's saying right, that, right there. It's an invitation for you to trust him like never before. Just like Job said and did, I will trust him even though he's taken things away from me even though I'm going through a time where I feel lost and confused, I will still trust in him. And today, friend, I just wanna encourage you to trust God like never before. Cling to his promises today like never before, that he will never leave you nor forsake you, that he is with you in the middle of the fire, in the middle of the storm. Sometimes he sends the storm. Sometimes he places you in that fire but he's with you and you're gonna come out and you're not even gonna be smelling like smoke. You might be walking through the deep waters, but you will not be overtaken. When the enemy comes in like a flood, the Lord lifts up a standard against him. That's another promise for you to take hold of today. And if you need prayer during this dark time, if you're walking through a dark time, please give us a call to pray with you. 1-800-700-7000. Hey everyone, I'm Ashley Key. Thank you so much for watching this video. Be sure to like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so we can reach more people with encouraging content like you just watched and so you never miss a beat. See you next time and God bless.